old car is a lot like watching black and white television. It's fun at first, but after a while, it becomes very annoying. There we are, that's better. You see, I'd wanted to drive an S-Type Jaguar for around 25 of the 30 years that I've been around. And now that I have done, it's a huge disappointment. Like all old cars, it's heavy, it's slow, and it has the handling characteristics of a hovercraft. It looks fantastic, though. In a perfect world, what I'd like is the fabulous 60s looks of this car with the performance of a modern car. Welcome to my perfect world. This car is an S-Type Jaguar, and it shares the aristocratic good looks of the other one. But that's just about the only thing they do have in common. Because whereas that car was squidgy, this car is solidity itself. Whereas the other car felt elderly, this car feels positively adolescent. And whereas the other car was simply adequate, this car is utterly awesome. This is not just a car, it is a symphony in steel. Like a Savile Row suit, it has been bespoke built to the exacting standards set by the customer. There is nothing of the ordinary about it. Everything is epic. The cabin remains the same handcrafted hide and veneer cocoon that so many have copied and so few have equalled, despite an extensive refit. There are the same number of gauges embedded in the burr walnut dash, except that these ones actually work. And the thoroughly agreeable experience of owning and driving this car has been further enhanced with air conditioning, a CD auto changer, electric seats, electric windows, and a sliding electric sunroof. Eminently civilised, utterly discreet, and exactly as it should be. Externally, there are few clues to the car's transformed character, although, if anything, the enlarged wheel arches required to house those oversized E-type wires and the cooling slats cut into the bonnet enhance the car's aesthetic appeal, something this ugly intercooler lurking underneath the front bumper most definitely doesn't do. But you only need glance beneath the abbreviated bonnet of a stock S-type to realise why it's so absolutely necessary. It always was a snug fit for the double overhead cam straight six, but when you add twin turbos, three cooling fans, 23 metres of plumbing, and an oil cooler the size of a radiogram, well, then you've got a scenario that would make one of the men employed at Tokyo Station to physically encourage reluctant commuters throw up his white-gloved hands in horror. Which is why the battery is banished to a boot the size of a bedsit. But why make life so hard? We could have supercharged a six-cylinder engine, we could have placed a V12 unit in the car, but we decided to retain as much of the original character of the car as possible. So we played with the 3.8-litre engine, but used twin turbochargers and fuel injection unit. We've restricted the engine to 300 brake horsepower, but it will, in fact, produce anything up to about 420 to 450 brake horsepower but if we put increased power through the drivetrain, we'd probably end up even bending the spokes of the wheels. It's been a very exciting project, very challenging technically. Sadly, customers like that don't come along every day of the week. Doubtless you will have noticed that the steering wheel dresses to the left, because where this customer comes from, that's the way they like them. There's a new Jaguar, the XJR, and inevitably it's been compared with Aston Martin's DB7. Choosing between the two has proved impossible. They are both truly great motor cars. For the cost of this car, you wouldn't have to choose. You could have them both. But what you still wouldn't have is a unique handcrafted car. And what you also wouldn't have is a car that is as British as, well, the view from here. <laughs> 